What's going on good people? So today we are talking about coding advice for career changes. Now, why are we talking about coding advice? Career changes, that's very, very specific. Well, obviously, because I'm a career changer. Five years ago, I came into tech. Now, if you are somebody who is in their 30s or 40s, somebody who is younger than that, but you're in a career that you don't enjoy, it's no fulfillment, you're not making enough money, and you're thinking about, hey, I wanna get into tech, or you already made that sort of movement into tech, then this video is for you. Now, if you're not a career changer, but you're in software, there may be some things in this video that appeal to you as well. So in this video, I'm going to go over four to five things that over the last five years have made a, have made a significant impact on my journey into tech. They're all, and they're all things that are probably going to crop up in your career change or within your career when you actually go through the change and you're in a job. So pay attention. Let's get to it. Okay, just to get this out of the way, if you're new to my channel, I'm Ishak. I'm a career changer now. I'm a senior software engineer. And over the last five years, I've built the UK's largest junior developer meetup. I started the Junior Developer Survival Guide. I've got a private mentoring group where you can see the link in the comment for career changers who are trying to get their first job in the industry or people who are in the industry and they're trying to get solid foundations, trying to understand how they should handle their meetings, how they should handle their manager, how they should grow their careers. Now, with that out the way, when I first came into the industry, and this is something that a lot of you are going to relate to when you get into it. I saw nothing but code, right? It was like being in the matrix, just green lines everywhere. I just wanted to get dirty with the code, tapping away on the keyboard, doing all those fun things that you like to do. Now you're probably thinking, Ishak, that sounds great. That's what I want to do. I just want to write code. And it is great. But you see, this is where the problem lies. If you want to develop strong foundational skills as a software engineer, you need to look beyond the code. Now, what do I mean by beyond the code? Well, you see, you're not being employed to write code when you get into a job or if you're in a job, you're being employed to solve a problem. What does that mean on the greater scheme of things when it comes down to actually writing and designing code? Well, first of all, don't just think about the code that you're writing. Think about how it's gonna impact the business. Think about how it's gonna accomplish what it's supposed to do. The problem that you're solving go so much further than the code that you're writing. So the first bit of advice that I give to everyone is think beyond the code. Think about the problem. Think about the solution that you're delivering and then start writing the code because your outcome will be so much better. And as you grow through your career bandings, as you move up to sort of a mid-level to senior or even a tech lead, these are the skills that the companies and your managers will look for to get you that promotion. Okay, so that first issue is pretty clear. Given that I've mentored hundreds of people into this industry, it's one that I see quite common. Now, number two is something I see just as commonly as well, but something that can be rectified quite easily as you grow through your career. What is number two? Well, I'll be absolutely honest with you. Don't get attached to the code that you write. Now, I'm guilty of this. We're all guilty of this at some point, especially as you get into the industry. You're gonna be working for a company. You're gonna build a platform. You're gonna write some code. You're gonna build a feature. And you may spend a day on it. You may spend a week on it. You may spend a month on it. The point being is that you put a lot of effort into it. You were on Stack Overflow. You are on ChatGPT. You were in meetings. You were doing points. You were doing everything that you could to make this piece of software a success. And it's, it's okay to get attached to it, right? You are gonna get attached to it. But then there comes the impending doom. Your product manager, your engineering manager, the company decides, actually, we don't need this anymore. It's not gonna provide any value to the customer. It's not gonna make any money. We're gonna scrap it. Dun, dun, dun. All of a sudden, you're feeling pretty run down. I get it. So here's the thing, as I mentioned in the first point, you are not a code monkey. You are a problem solver. The problem that you had to solve at this time, it may not be a problem anymore after further research. Now, this will lead on to point number three as well. But what I would say to you is this, try not to become too attached to your code because things change so quickly in the landscape of business that what you did six weeks ago, six months ago, a year ago, might not be relevant for the, way, for the position the company's in going forwards. So try not to get attached to your code. Okay, so that's two points that cover in the industry and I'm gonna cover one more that covers being in the industry as well. Three after that are for people who are not in careers yet but are trying to get into the industry. So stay tuned for that. Third point they both relate to is knowing when to push back. Now, this is something you will probably grow into in your career. I wouldn't expect somebody who's in their first year or first six months or even first three months to do something like this, but it relates to them because, because throughout your career, you are going to be assigned unreasonable work. Now, what do I mean by unreasonable work? Well, I mean, it could have no value. It could deliver nothing to the customer. It could save no time for the business. And as a software engineer, it's a really good practice to get into in the early years to understand what the impact is gonna have on the work that you are being assigned. Now, by impact, I mean things that I've already covered. Is it going to save the business money? Is it going to save the business time? Is it going to make them money or make them time? If it's not doing any of those things, should it really be in the sprint? Should it really be something that you're doing? Now, 
the best engineers and those who go on through promotions, who go to senior, who go to tech leads are the ones who can say, hang on a minute, this is a good requirement. However, are we sure there's not something more important? Do we actually need this? Is this a strong requirement for the benefit of the business? And making the people who made that decision have a second look at it because there's no point doing something for no benefit and no outcome. Okay, so we've covered three bits of solid coding advice for career changers who are in industry, but what about people who are trying to get into the industry? Okay, so point number four. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that I see people career changing into tech make is that they try to do a bit of everything. They keep following these sort of online articles and people's suggestions that tech moves so quick, learn this, learn that, study this, study that. What's come to be known as paralysis by analysis. They don't do anything because they're just trying to understand everything which doesn't work in technology. What you need to do is really get good with your foundations. Now to do that, all you need to do is pick an area where you think you're gonna be happy. Whether that's web development, app development, data engineering, computer science, cybersecurity, whatever it is, pick an area, pick the main software. So your language, pick one language, pick one framework and a couple of bits around it, like a testing tool that are related to that area and use them and study them and don't do anything else for six months to a year, just stick with them. Now I did this recently with a mentee. We sat down for 45 minutes, we wrote out a plan of action and for the next six months, he's gonna start with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, Next.js and then we're gonna go on to things like Jest, testing and accessibility and by the time he gets around to that, he's gonna be a solid front end developer who companies will be tripping over for. <sighs> okay, are you still with me? Cause we're near the end. Okay, so that makes sense, right? There's no point trying to do everything. But then what happens as you get further down the line? Do you have to stay in that area? Quite frankly, no. I started off my career as a mobile engineer. I then did some full stack development. I then went into data engineering. Now I'm back in full stack development, but with totally different tools that I was using before. I've worked as a front end developer, back end developer, and now I write server side and scripting languages on OS level hardware. Now, how does that apply to you and sort of being stuck in one area? Well, you see, this is what I related to in the first part of the video. Software engineering is about problem solving. Your language of choice should not be dictated by your preference. It should be dictated by the problem you've got to solve. So for me personally, and many people I've worked with, we love to solve difficult problems. We don't care what language we have to use to do it. That's the mindset and approach you should take as a career changer. Don't get too tied into one thing, one tool. Now, of course, if you found an area you love, you've got a passion for, and you're happy with that, then by all means, go head first. But for people who love software engineering and problem solving as a whole, use the right tool for the right job and solve the problem with whatever is the best tool to solve it with. Okay, so what's my last piece of coding advice for career changers? So this is probably one of the most important bits. Don't, don't overcomplicate your code. Now there's two things I want to sort of highlight here. Number one, if you are pre in the industry and you're writing code, don't think that code has to be the most complicated thing that you've ever seen. As a human, you should be able to read through your code and understand the flow and logic. Now remember, coding is just a way to communicate with a machine to tell it what to do. Now good code is executed by machine, but it's readable by a human. Don't get me wrong, I don't mean put hundreds of comments in there. I mean use descriptive variable words. I mean functions that have a clear input and output. I mean not having thousands of lines of code in a single file. And the second approach to that is when you are in work and you come across a code base, have a look what's already in there. Don't just jump into a code base in a new company or on a new project and start typing out what you think should be done. Go through the existing code, go through the flow of things, see what they're using. Are they using React Hook Form? Are they using Formic? Axios or are they using Fetch Request? There's no point you going in like a bull in a china shop, knocking things over and doing things your way. Chances are, whatever you're being asked to do has already been done before in the code, so follow the flow of things. If you are a career changer, what would you share with other people who are thinking about doing the same thing? I'd love to hear it in the comments where I am responding. And finally, if you are looking to get into tech and you're struggling with ideas, you need someone to answer your questions and help you out, check out the link to my school community below. Come in and say hello. There's a seven day free period. 